Good evening, all. All of you are welcome in the second session of this webinar. And uh, within uh, two to three minutes, we will start the webinar. We will just get all participants in, and then we will move ahead. I request Mr. Ashish Kumar to make the speaker's co-host. Yes, sir. Yeah. We are ready to move ahead, but uh, participants are getting in. Let all participants come and then we will start. Mr. Rashid, please, please make the editorial board members as the co-host, so that they can uh, get they, they can get participants in. So I request co-host to uh, admit the participants, please.
हेलो ओके चल आता लगे चालू करू का ओके हेलो एवरीबॉडी एम आई ऑडिबल यस यू आर ऑडिबल रिस्पेक्टेड डिग्नेटरी फैकल्टी स्टाफ एंड माय डियर स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू यू ऑल आई डॉक्टर सुनीता पनिकर फ्रॉम डॉक्टर डी वाई पाटिल आर्ट कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज पिंपरी पुणे टेक एन इमेंस प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर इंटरनेशनल स्पीकर डॉक्टर संकेत जोशी The task of introducing our honourable speaker is a great privilege. I know this is a difficult task, but with the thought that he is a man of virtue and simplicity, I feel delighted to introduce him to you all. Dr. Sankit Joshi did his bachelor's and master's in microbiology from Sardar Patel University, Gujarat, and his PhD in microbiology from Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda, India. Since October 2018, he is the deputy director of for Oil and Gas Research Center, Sultan Kubas University, Oman. His thrust areas for research are energy and environment, industrial fermentation, and green nanoparticles. He has 119 total publications to his credit, which includes 58 journal papers, 11 book chapters. one book and 49 conference papers based on the number of citations between 2009 to 2018 he was ranked 34 in the squ among the top 500 authors dr joshi is also involved in various academic research projects out of which five have been completed and six are ongoing these projects have received huge funds from renowned funding agency like his majesty trust fund sultan kubas university and petroleum development oman he has guided many msc students for their dissertation projects and three phd students as an intermediate supervisor dr sanket is a member of many associations and recipient of many prestigious awards with this brief introduction I welcome Dr. Sankit Joshi and request him to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunita. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, so I will start sharing the screen. Shall I go ahead? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. So, thank you, Dr. Sonita, for uh, giving such a nice and wonderful introduction. And I would like to uh, first of all thank all of you participants who came for session two for second day of this webinar. And on behalf of uh, International Journal of Microbial Science and entire uh, community. committees who are involved with us i welcome you all for the session 2 so in this session what we'll be discussing today is about microsoft powerpoint as a data presentation tool so what will we learn in uh, this presentation the role of uh, microsoft powerpoint in data presentation and research articles how to use it for data presentation some tips and tricks like what to do or what not to do when you go for scientific presentations or teaching or something some advantages and disadvantages of such uh, softwares and some other things so before we go into detail i would like to share my journey in one slide so i started from nowhere with uh, local language as a subject not in english medium and still managed to publish several research work in some of the well known journals you can see some of the journals on your left hand side uh, managed to present it in several countries in conferences and seminars and everything 
and also joined editorial board of reputed journals, which are also shared in the slide on your left hand side. So why I am showing this is mainly if someone like me with no background or no exposure 20 years ago for such webinars and everything, if I managed to make it so far, then I'm quite certain that um, people like you who have access and exposure to so many things, knowledge at your fingertip, with hard work and perseverance, you can surely do much better than me. So I'm sure you will do better than me. So I'd like to start this presentation with one nice saying by Mahatma Gandhi. What he said was, live as you fear to die tomorrow and learn as if you are to live forever. So learning is a lifelong process. Nobody uh, knows everything. So why I'm saying this? Uh, because of the reason that I am sharing some things about how to present things and uh, how to prepare PowerPoint presentations and everything. It's not because I know uh, better than anybody else or I am better than you. I'm also still learning and I also do some mistakes. So uh, maybe some of you know it better than me. So I'm not claiming to be an expert or better than anybody. I'm still learning. So let's have a uh, look about the brief history of such uh, presentation tools which were used before, where are we now, and why we need to go for presentation. So as you can see on the right-hand side corner, um, it's reported that 75% of what we know or learn comes to us visually with a clear, concise, with a purpose and everything. So it makes a big impact, such different aids for presentation. And as you can see in the yellow background, uh, there are some projected visuals where you can see some of this you might have used or some of uh, these you might have never seen, like slides, film strip, multi-image presentation, and all those things. Um, maybe you know overhead projections, like the transparencies and everything, which is sometimes still used. And here in the bottom left-hand corner is computer image projection. These are the overhead projectors, which are normally used in presentations or conferences and everything. So tremendous things are changed uh, to help you to present it in a better manner, your research work and anything. So still, one thing remains uh, constant. It's a confidence of a person or exposure or experience of a person who will be giving a talk. So there are some nice sayings. I would like to share it with you here. Uh, it says, uh, this is Sir George Chessel. He said like, the human brain starts working the moment you are born and it never stops until you stand up to speak in public. It happens with many of us, like we can speak a lot on anything and everything, but when we are given the opportunity to speak as a public speaker, our brain stops working. It happens with everybody. So how you can come out of it? Any different presentation aids and all those things won't help you much if you are not coming out of this problem. So uh, everybody knows Richard Branson, he's the owner of Intergalactic and everything. So he said like, picture yourself in a living room, having a chat with your friends, you would be relaxed and comfortable talking to them. So the same applies when you are doing public speaking. So don't think this as a public speaking or something, just consider is, is a similar principle while giving a public speech also. So if you follow this, you won't have any problem and slowly we will learn and we can go ahead with this. So we will uh, uh, discuss many things about Microsoft PowerPoint, but this is not the only software which is available for uh, preparing presentations and everything. I uh, selected three of the main uh, most popular presentation software packages. Depending on the kind of operating system one is using, like on the left-hand side is Microsoft PowerPoint 2016. That's the version which I have used to prepare this. You have 2019 and now the new one is um, Office 365. Uh, everything else will be closed. One in the middle is the software provided by Google. It's known as Google Slides. And the third one, if you are using Apple or Mac operating system, then you will be having Apple Keynote. Because all three softwares have plus and minus, but all three are widely used all over the world, like in Europe, in US, in India, depending on the kind of uh, computer or the kind of software operating system you are using. But mainly we will discuss about Microsoft PowerPoint because it's widely used and it has several advantages. So where do we use or need such presentation softwares? Where do we use it in research or anything else? So um, I uh, take it for granted that all of you or most of you are researchers, either did research or supporting research students or something. So as a researcher, when you do research, you have good data. 
So mainly uh, two things are needed. One is to write manuscripts, to publish papers. And you learned certain things about how to write papers by Dr. Aparna yesterday. It was an excellent presentation. So once you write papers, sometimes you need to go and present your work in conferences as a poster um, to present research findings to audience like in uh, different seminars, conferences in the classroom teaching, maybe defending your thesis or to prepare figures for the transcripts. So these are the things in research where you will need uh, access to such sort of uh, PowerPoint or Keynote or some software. So you need to know how you work on those softwares. So these are the places where you need such softwares. So, so how you can do it? Um, if you compare uh, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, PowerPoint and Word are somewhat simpler because you won't be doing much. You need to do research. If you have data, then you need to know how to present it. So this is why you need to learn how to make presentations. So on the how you can prepare presentations. I'm sure all of you must have used at least some version of PowerPoint. If not 2016, 2010, seven, several uh, softwares are available. So one of those softwares, you must have used it. So on the topmost screen, what you can see is the ribbon menu. That's the menu which you will see clearly. So how can you start making PowerPoint presentations? So as, you, as I said, you will need some data, some background or the purpose why you need to do this presentation. So how you can do it? Um, you can bring the data from Word, Excel, audio clip, video file, or any other source by either copy paste, that's control C and control V, or you can prepare it here on the slide using the command insert from the ribbon menu. As you can see at the topmost corner, you can insert new slide, you can insert a table, you can insert pictures, online pictures, photo albums from your computer, different shapes, smart art, charts. Instead of bringing it from Excel, you can make a graph here. You can make different kinds of text box to enter the text instead of bringing it from the Word file and all those things. This is almost more or less similar like in Word file, but you can bring it in one slide. So what do I prefer normally for uh, inserting things from the text box? or header and footer and video audio, it's fine that you can do or you can copy paste from somewhere. But for charts, I prefer to uh, prepare Excel or Origin or some other software, state graphics or SPSS or something, then prepare the graphs and transfer it here as an image. Why we should do it, even though we have an option of bringing charts, um, it's because of to avoid the issues in changing in the format. When you bring the graphs from another uh, software to uh, another platform, sometimes the formatting will get changed, the background will get changed. Or if you prepare it here, then also while transferring the data or something, your formatting will get changed. So it's always better to prepare certain things in the software where it is meant to be, like preparing graphs, preparing figures and other things that you can make it there or you can make it here and just bring it here. Or other things are just better to save it as a picture and you can bring it here. So as I said, you can use such presentation uh, softwares for two purpose. You can go for the conferences or you can make posters. We don't always get oral presentations or uh, invited lectures or something. Sometimes we need to go for poster presentations also. So there are plenty of softwares where you can make your posters in uh, simple software as Microsoft Word also you can make it and you can save it as a PDF. So same way you can use PowerPoint slides also as a poster. So on the right hand side, what you can see is one of the poster which we presented in one of the conference here um, in uh, our university for one of the conferences. So how you prepare poster, everything is same like making a slide, just you need to change the dimension because different conferences, they have different sizes. Some will allow you a poster of A0 size. Some uh, conferences will need B3. Some conferences will need three by three feet. So depending on the size of the conference, which allows you, you can select the slide size and you can select it from custom. You can go to file, you can have a new slide and the custom dimension based on what the conference is requiring. And then you can go for two columns, three columns, similar like what you do it in Word. And you can transfer your data and you can make a poster. After making the poster, Either you can save it as a slide or to be on a safe side, you can save it as an image or you can save it as a PDF file just to avoid this issue of changing the format. Because once you transfer, you take it for printing or something, 
all formatting will be changed. We must have, we all must have observed it while writing papers or making slides. So it's always better once you are done, save it as a PDF or save it as an image so that things won't change. So this is how you can use it at making posters. Another example is how you can use this Microsoft PowerPoint for uh, making figures. Uh, don't go to all the data in this uh, slide. It's more technical. Uh, purpose is not to uh, show the data on the slide. This is one of the picture which was uh, uh, part of one of the review paper which we published in 2018. And it's one of the highly cited paper. It's almost cited 70 times in uh, two years. So what we did, we used PowerPoint to prepare this slide or figure. Most of the thing what you are seeing on the slide is a write-up. So this, you can use it from the text box. Some of the images, we took it from internet. You can just type in Google a picture of a truck or a clip art of a truck. So you can find it there. You can bring it here. This is a simple image of a fermenter. You don't need to make a fermenter. Same thing you can do. You can go for free Shutterstock images in Google where you don't need to ask for licenses like this picture of a PC, I didn't prepare it. You can of course prepare this also. It's a simple square and a rectangle or else you can copy paste from there and then you can make a story. So in this figure, what we wanted to show was three phases of how you can utilize a micro build product for enhancing oil recovery. So this is just an example. This is very simple image. You can of course go for several other softwares. You can use even simple paintbrush in Microsoft which is very simple software. Same thing, you can do it there also. Uh, for simpler images, I prefer PowerPoint because the option of saving, I can save it as a PDF, I can save it as an image and in any format, JPEG, TIFF format, different journals, they will have different requirements. Some will ask you for TIFF, some will ask you for JPEG, you can save it as a PNG and this slide will always stay there for you to edit and dimension is not a problem. You can make a very big side of big size of a picture and then you can always save it as a small image. So this is just an example. You can make anything you want from the slides. So we learn how uh, simple things you can use it to uh, make a slide for PowerPoint presentation, for making posters and many other things. So, and it's very simple software, but there are uh, certain things uh, which we need to make in mind when uh, we go for presentation. These are not rule of thumbs, no uh, specialized rules are there, but they are generally accepted do's and don'ts when you go for PowerPoint presentation. So as you can see, there are two columns. This is a table. I inserted a table from the menu, like insert and then table. So these are two column table. The option is there, say similar to Word. So as you can hear, uh, certain things are suggested. If you follow this, and if you go for some conferences, your presentation will look better. Of course, you need a better data, not just a nice slide. You need a better data also. But certain things you don't have to uh, forget. Like what you need to do, use a big enough font. What is a font? Font, everybody knows. It's a font size, minimum 18 to 20 point. This is not Word. This is PowerPoint. So 18 to 20 font in a Word file is huge. We don't need to use it for writing our papers. 16 itself is quite big. But here in PowerPoint, when you are presenting your data, you can't use 12 or 14. You need minimum 18 to 20 font size. Why? Because you want to show it to an audience where they need to see it from far. Like in this case, this is a webinar. You might be sitting with your laptop, your desktop or mobile or something. So it's not an issue. You are seeing it from quite near. But when you go for a conference or in a seminar or in a classroom teaching or defending your thesis, audience won't be sitting next to you. They will be seeing it from far. So if font size is very small, they can't read it. And it's not nice experience. So what you don't have to do, don't make it too small so that you or your audiences can't read it. It's not nice. Then again, you need to keep background simple. Don't go for complicated background in your slides. Simpler is better sometimes and don't use a fuzzy background image. This is another problem. Sometimes we uh, take some image or our own photo and we keep it as a background image and we extrapolate it. Some images won't fit to the size. So we pull it from left, right or something and then the image will become fuzzy. So it's not good, it's quite distracting. Don't use a fuzzy background image. Then do use animations when appropriate. Animations means sometimes the slides will uh, when I was a student in my master's some 
some years ago, we learned Microsoft PowerPoint 98 or something. It was a new uh, thing for us. So what we used to do, we learned how to make animations. A slide will come from here, a line will come from bottom, and the picture will jump from in between. So we used to like it so much without knowing that it is quite distracting. It's not a nice idea to have jumping things here and there. So why you don't have to do it? So don't overdo the animations. Certain animation effects are fine, but don't overdo it because then it gets distracting. The audience won't be able to focus on the data, what you want them to have focus on. They will be confused because things are coming from everywhere. Suddenly things are disappearing and everything. So if necessary, you can use it, but use it in a moderation. Don't use it too much. Then avoid clutter. Stick to three to five bullet points per slide at the most. Don't put everything on the slide that you have so many information. It's not a publication paper, it's a presentation. So you don't need to write everything on a slide. Certain things you need to use just the words and then sentences you have to speak. At the same time, don't use endless slides or bulleted lists like one after the other, one after the other, several bulleted points will be there. They all will look the same. Don't do this, it's not nice. Then less is more. How many number of slides you should have? So again, it's not a rule of thumb, but normally what experts are saying is 20 to 25 slides for a speech of 40 to 45 minutes is sufficient if you have sufficient data. So you don't need to make 60 slides or 100 slides for one hour presentation. At the same time, if you have 15 minutes, like in most of the oral presentations for a conference, you don't need to make 25 slides. So I will give an example at the end. If you are participating in a conference for 10 to 15 minutes time, how many slides you should have and what you should have in your slides that we will see. Then one of the most important thing, be it writing paper or making a presentation, don't forget to cite references or acknowledge any source of material used, which is not from your own work. If you take any picture, if you take any information or something, please you have to cite a reference or acknowledge the source. If you don't do it, uh, maybe in a seminar, in a college or internal uh, organization, it's fine. But when you go for international conferences, it's quite embarrassing. Somebody will pinpoint that this is my picture, this is my work. You just copy pasted it without my permission. Similarly, as you have uh, learned yesterday that you need to acknowledge or cite or take permission when you write a paper, which you have learned from Dr. Aparna's lecture. You cannot just copy paste things without permission. At least acknowledge. Then always check your spellings. Don't go without spell check. It's not nice. Then don't use awkward, unique fonts. We like changing fonts and everything, but try to make it simple. Try to use Times New Roman or the fonts which are available in PowerPoint slide. Don't take different kinds of fonts and then it won't work. Your PowerPoint projection won't recognize it. Overhead projector won't recognize it and it will be all messed up. So don't use awkward or unique fonts. Try to be simple. Make things visual. What does it mean? It means that instead of writing everything on a slide, try to use as less as possible and try to use as many optional pictures as possible. We will see some examples of this. So when you say like this, some people, they just keep on putting so many pictures. So that's also a risk. Don't overdo or overuse complex images. Don't put very complicated images on one slide, which people can't understand. So these are very basic do and don'ts when you go for PowerPoint presentations or uh, Microsoft or Google or Apple or any software. Don't do those things and do try to follow certain things. So normally rule of thumb for phones are 28 to 40 for headlines, 18 to 28 for normal text and 12 to 14 for references. When you cite some references, this you need to make sure. Plus one bonus tip, this is based on experience, my own experience and others experience. Always keep more than one source of presentation files with you. Why? Because you never know when will it get corrupted or won't open. You take one source of your presentation in one file or in your computer and on the day of your presentation, it won't work because it's deja vu. It happens always. So always have backup. Always send your presentation by email or have one or two copies in a power, um, USB, give it to your friend or your colleagues who are coming together. So always have backup. So I will give you some of the examples. Um, when you go for presentations or scientific lectures or seminar in a university, college, or uh, any different platform, I will give you some of the examples of what we learn in the back, what you should do and what you should not do. So in this slide, this is a scientific presentation where a person wants to show 
issue of plastic and plastic degradation, how it is affecting our ecosystem. So if I am the presenter, and if I'm going to present this, how I can do it? The easiest way, what normally people do is, they have to read because information is there. So I'll say, do you know how long it takes for the plastic bag? You discard it to break down. It takes really a long time. We all know this now, plastic is a big issue. Then again, question is, do you fully understand the impact it has on marine life and consequently on the health and well-being of humans as well? Then it says plastic waste does not biodegrade, but it photodegrades. So it means that if your plastic eventually break down into very small particles and the fragments, it will never completely go away. So these small plastic bits are called microplastics. It will accumulate into fish, birds, marine life, and blah, blah, blah. And it will affect our dinner plates. So it is clear that marine debris is a big problem and it has many negative impacts, but it is also a preventable problem that we have the power to address. We should address this issue seriously. So please do your part to protect the environment by ensuring you correctly dispose of your waste and wherever possible, find alternatives for your single use plastic. So it took more than 35 seconds or almost a 60 seconds, one minute time for me to read. If I have gone through this information more than once, what will I do? I may not look at the slide or the screen. I will look at you and again, I will have to speak the same thing. So it's informative, but what is the problem? This is the problem. It's too much information in one slide, plain information, no infographics, no images, no nothing. I either have to simply read or I want my audience to read my slides. If my audience can read the slides, then they don't need me. Why am I here? So they are here to listen and learn from me what I want to present in a scientific platform. So what I can do, the same information if I want to present, I will go for graphics, infographics. This is exactly same thing divided into two slides. Same case scenario. This is a natural reserve cleanup initiative where what we are saying is there is a list of things which degrades from less than a month or up to 600 years. So as you can see, these are the things which we use in our day-to-day -day life, starting from a paper bag, uh, food waste, socks, water bottle, our glass bottle, fishing net, fishing hook, and, and our plastic cups, clothes, and everything. So what it says, leather shoe will take around 40 years to degrade. Your plastic bottle will take more than 450 years. And your fishing net will take, we don't know it yet, because it's not yet decided. So overall, all those things will take almost 600 years to 400 years. So not a single generation will be alive to see the effect, adverse effect and everything, or whether it is degraded or not. Five or six generations will be gone. Still, those things will be here. So, as per the EPA, these things are quite dangerous. We need to make sure that we don't use it much more. So it's exactly the same thing which you have seen in the previous slide, but you can show this picture here and then you can explain. Plus the effect of such plastic waste on marine source, if you are presenting in your work, this is what you can show. That if plastic is there, it will be ingested by fish or the sea animal, corals will be affected, and then fishing nets will enter a turtle, many whales and everything. You must be seeing this on National Geography, BBC, and many platforms, and it is affecting so many species. And where will it end up? On your plate. If you are a non-vegetarian, and if you like seafood, this is what will happen. You will have microplastic on your plate. So these two slides are saying exactly the same thing what you have seen in the first slide, case one. So that's not good. This is what you should do show some images. So showing images instead of too much write-up is good. So we will learn another case. Here you can see there is an image. A person wants to give an example of different products, what you can get from crude oil, a barrel of crude oil. So this is one example of scientific data by visuals. So it's a nice image, it's a clear image, and it shows so many things, like if you heat, from 1050 degree Fahrenheit to 85 degree Fahrenheit, what happens at different temperatures? You can have petrol, you can have gasoline, you can have diesel, you can have crude uh, residual oil and all those things. And it can be used to make paper bags, plastic spoons, and in your car and everything. So it's a nice image, but what's the problem? So the problem is too much visual information in one slide. It's quite good and informative, clear, but quite complicated. If you have an image like this, it's very difficult for your audience to see, even though it is quite informative. So if you want to present something like this, what you can do, same information, you can either present like this, 
this is similar thing so you want to show what is there in a barrel of crude oil by percentage what you can get out of a barrel of crude oil so you can get petrol some percentage of wax lubricants polishes asphalt to make your road you can use it for petrochemical feedstock jet fuel marine fuel and some percentage of diesel so this is one way you can show or else if you want to show all the other products this is another way it's the same thing what you can make from one barrel of oil you can make 170 birthday candles or 27 crayons you can use it to produce motor oil you can use four pounds of charcoal your car can go up to 280 miles worth of gasoline your trucks can go on diesel you can have coal tar to make the roads you can generate electricity 70 kilowatt per hour or you can use it to produce lpg this is from the maximum higher portion percentage of the crude oil even once you uh, segregate and separate all those things you still have sufficient waste product or leftover which can be used for making toothbrush combs your plastic drinking cups your telephone housing your plastic uh, dust beans, your polyester shirt, and hula hoops and many things, toys and everything. So this two slides will show you how you can present the same complicated data in not so complicated manner. So you should show visuals, you should use figures, not so much text, but at the same time, you need to make it less complicated, more appealing to your audience. You need to show in a better manner. Uh, this is another thing which I didn't learn when I started making presentations and everything. So don't feel shy to share some scientific humor, uh, but it depends on the audience, the platform, and where you are doing it. So if you have some scientific cartoons or something relevant to your presentation, don't feel shy. You can always share it. Like on your left-hand side, this is what is happening right now in India or in countries where crude oil prices and petrol prices are increasing very high. So if you are trying to show the effect of increasing crude oil or petrol prices, this couple goes to a bank, to take a loan because they have a SUV. SUV will need lots of fuel, lots of petrol. So they managed to buy an SUV, but now based on the petrol price, they don't have money. So it's a scientific humor where they are saying, you would like to fill the tank and that's why we came for a loan. Or on your right hand side, we know oil spills and everything. Crude oil is spilled and being a microbiologist, we also know that Pseudomonas putida is a well-known organism. So here two Pseudomonas are talking to each other. They are saying, um, why people are making so much fuss about it? This stuff is delicious. They are eating crude oil. So not everyone hates oil spill. So something like this or better than this, you can always show on your presentations based on the kind of audience. So you need to know uh, where you can use such things. But if it's a platform, you can always go for such humor based on science also. So this is another slide. Like if you are going for a um, presentation, not PhD or something, like in this slide, what I'm trying to show here is a decade of like it's a work of 10 years so slides like this you can show entire work what you did in past 10 years with a pictorial thing with some information some animations as you can see here this is animation so this slide shows uh, the oil based research with help of microbes what our group was doing so we isolated microbes for microbes we identified the microbes using molecular biology techniques, using morphological techniques. Then we optimized the media. Then we did the screening, characterized the products, and then did extensive stability. And after this, we went for a scale up, like in a small fermenter for lab scale. And after which, we went ahead for a 100 liter fermenter. And after 100 liter trials and everything, now we are looking forward for further scale up in 1000 liter or more than that. And then to go ahead for the field scale. So you can show. Uh, information like this also in your slide when you are going for a particular kind of presentation or seminars or conferences where you have so much of work and on a particular topic, you accumulated so many things with help of figures, animations and everything. So in this next slide, uh, we'll learn how to add a thing that is audio or video. Again, we'll go to this insert option. Uh, sometimes when you go for presentations, uh, you may need to insert video clips or audio clips in your slides. So how can you do this? Can you see this? Are you seeing these things clearly? <clears throat> Hello? Yes, yes. Go ahead, okay. sir. 
okay because it gave some message internet connection is not stable okay sorry so this options are uh, possible in a recent powerpoint softwares like in 2016 2019 or office 365 and some other softwares not in the older version when i started learning powerpoint i never knew that you can insert video and audio and everything because those options were not available so what you can do you can just click on a video so once you click on the video file uh, i can show you here so let's go for insert go inside you can click on the button audio or video so it gives you two option online video or it gives option video on my pc if you have a video file already there like from your research work or something you can click on the link or if you want to embed online video let's see online video these are the examples on the pc here on this presentation so when you click on online video it will take you to either youtube or because it's a powerpoint so it will give you option of embed code so you can search on the youtube or anything dna polymerization anything you click here and you press search i'm not doing it here because it's very simple but you need to know how to do it or else you can embed the code if you know the code of something you can do it here another way is very simple i will show you how to do so let's say i want to show you dna polymerization so i wrote dna polymerization here it's too small let's make it bold and let's make it big so i want to insert how to do dna polymerization so how can i do it i'll search it in google dna polymerization i already did it before so this is the slide for dna polymerization so so this is dna to protein this is dna replication sorry so i will copy this link here i will select this part and i will right click it gives me the option of hyperlink so i will connect it so this window will open i will paste it here this is the website and i will say okay so this is already here this is one way by which you can do you can embed the link here or if you know the you go by this. so let's go back to the presentation so when you come to this slide you just have to click on this dna polymerization so when i click on it it will open in a new window like it's already there so it will open and you can see the slide and so in this slide you can show the video you can make it full screen you can make it small screen and everything can be shown to the person and once this is finished you can go back to your slide this is one way by which you can insert your audio or video or if you know the uh, code if you are into coding or something you can directly uh, like this is simple way by which if you click on it it will go to the new video file on internet or else you can show the video here so this video is for cardiovascular disease linked based on gut microbes depending on the microbes in your stomach it's related to heart disease this is a recent paper and they posted it so you can directly embed your video here so if you click on it it will open instead of opening in a new window or something so this video you can share it with your audience it will show everything whatever you saved it on your internet file so this is another way by which you can do you can embed your image you can bring pictures online if you have a file video file or audio file on your pc you can connect it here otherwise you need internet your pc should be connected to internet if you want to show something online so what else you can do you can do many things and only limitation is your imagination you can bring out the images you can bring out the pictures from screenshots you can start doing screen recording so like if you are doing classroom teaching you can put your audio files or screen recording and then you can always paste it online so then you just need to share it like it's needed right now because of this covid 19 situation and everything where people can't go to school can't go to college or can't go for presentation like this one this is online webinar so next week i will be doing a presentation in an international conference so i will be doing it from here and they will be presenting in germany so if i can't go at the right time because of the time gap i can do screen mirroring and everything and just send them the link or just 
share the presentation with them and with my voice, with my audio, with my video, and it will be presented. So such options are available with recent software, like 2016 and everything. So now we learn uh, how to use PowerPoint or Keynote or Google, where we can use it and everything. So let's learn certain advantages and disadvantages of so three different options available with you, which is PowerPoint by Microsoft, Keynote, which is by Google, and um, Google Drive, sorry. Keynote is by Apple and Google Slides are by Google. So uh, the problem with Office 2016 and 2019 PowerPoint is now they like starting from this year, Microsoft is a business. So they started rolling out uh, Microsoft PowerPoint as a, a deal package deal with 365. You have to purchase this software every year, you have to renew it and everything. So now it's a part of Office 365. Keynote is a part of iWork Productivity Suite. If you have uh, ever used uh, MacBook Air or um, iPad or something, you must have gone through it. Keynote is similar to PowerPoint. Google Slides is part of Google Drive Office Suite. So what kind of files you can export here? Because in uh, such sort of presentations as, as we have learned, we need to export Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, image, everything. So we need versatile software where we can bring many things from outside. So Microsoft PowerPoint is much better. So instead of many PowerPoint uh, slides and Office formats, you can also export uh, several formats like PDF, JPEG, uh, MKV file. So you have more options here, more availability of choices. For Keynote, similar to like any other things in Apple, it's more uh, close boundary. You can still bring PDF, some PowerPoint files, QuickTime. QuickTime is like a audio player. That's the only thing available. HTML languages, images, and some Keynote 2009 files. You can't do many things. In Google Slides, you can bring PDF, text, JPEG, but not like PowerPoint or Keynote. So you can bring audio into PowerPoint and uh, Keynote, but in Google Slides, because uh, Google owns YouTube, so they prefer you use YouTube videos if you are using Google Slides. Other options are not there. You can't import audio. So animations and effects, sometimes it's needed, depending on the kind of presentation. So you can go for almost 50 kinds of effects, like your slides will come from down, your fly slide will glow, it will exit. These are, again, animations. So, these are all options possible in PowerPoint. And similar way, you can have 30 to 40 inbuilt animations in uh, Keynote also. For Google Slides, they are still learning, so they have around 15 effects. Note that it makes much difference for technical presentations, but sometimes it helps to highlight your things. Do you have offline access? This is another important thing, that you don't need to go always online. So, of course, PowerPoint and Keynote, you can have it in uh, Keynote as long as you're a uh, file has to be saved on some location. But for Google Slides, you can do sometimes offline saving if it's in a Google Slide app. Otherwise, it's not possible. Most important thing is cost. Nothing is cheap. Um, Microsoft Office, you need to purchase from Microsoft or sometimes options also. It's risky, uh, but it works. And Microsoft doesn't mind much. For Keynote, it comes free with new Mac. When you buy a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, it comes by itself, or you can download it from uh, App Store also. But to buy Mac, you need to sell your kidney because it's quite expensive. It's much expensive than buying a Microsoft Office. So yeah, it's very expensive, the instrument itself. Google Slides is free as a part of Google Office. You just need to open a Google account and they will have access to everything what you do, and then they will give it free access. So is it available for Mac, PC or something? Yeah, PowerPoint and Keynote are available. But for Google Slides, you need internet connection. As long as you have connection, you can use it on some slides. So these are some basic advantages and disadvantages. But main disadvantages of such presentations are, which is the biggest, that you should not forget how to teach without PowerPoint presentations, especially for classroom teaching, for conferences, and university teaching. Uh, there are advantages that you can show so many nice things, animations, 3D videos, like one which we have seen for DNA replication. So if you will directly go into those, then we may forget how to do normal classroom teaching with a whiteboard or a blackboard. So we should not be so much reliant on such technologies. We should have best of both. We should learn new technology and we should remember how to do it without that also. So these are some very basic um, shortcuts when you are doing presentations which will help you when you go for a presentation and you don't have access to your mouse. 
Sometimes somebody else is doing, you have to say, next, please, next, please, thank you, go back to the previous slide, or somebody will ask you, okay, after the presentation, what was there on a graph and slide number 10? So you need to go one by one, one by one. So it's quite confusing. And if you don't have access to mouse, it's problem. So these are some very simple basic points. You can press space, space bar, N, or up or down arrow or enter and everything. So it will take you to the next slide. If you want to go back to previous slide, you can go for backspace P, that's for previous or page up. Then if you want to directly go to a particular slide, so what you can do, you can type, let's say 15 and then enter. So it will take you to slide number 15. Or if you are discussing something, your presentation is finished and then you don't want people to keep on looking at the last slide. So what you can do, you can press this. When you press this, it blanks your screen. If you press it again, again, the screen will come back. Similar way, escape is end of slideshow. F5 is you have to start the slideshow. You can just press F5 or shift F5, depending on the PC or the version you are using. So these are very simple uh, shortcuts, which might be helpful when you go for presentation. And if you don't have access to mouse, you have only keyboard or just the screen in front of you. These are very simple things, what you can use. This is another thing. When you go for a presentation where you have limited time, you can't show everything, but you want to highlight the place where you are working or uh, the reports or extra books you publish or something. So in this slide, what we are sh uh, showing here is like we did some uh, uh, books of past 12 years of work and what we are doing at Oil and Gas Research Center. And so these are the links. When you put such links or something there, People can directly go there and they can refer to your sites. Or now this is a new generation where people have um, barcode access to their phones and everything. So you can make a barcode, save your PDF file in your server or something and just paste the barcode. So people can scan it and they can have access to all your files. Like if you scan these two barcodes, you will have access to whatever information we have presented there. So this is also one way by which you can save space and time and you can share your information with the audience also. They will have the access. So this is also one way by which you can show in your presentation. So as I said in the beginning, uh, let's uh, have an example. How a presentation should be there. Let's say you go for, uh, you are invited for an oral presentation and a conference. And normally, uh, depending on the type of conference, what they will do, they will give maximum time 10 to 15 minutes. You won't have 45 minutes or 60 minutes or something, unless you are a plenary speaker or invited lecturer or something. 10 to 15 minutes is the maximum time you have. So out of the 10 to 15 minutes, you need to have some five minutes for question and answer also. Uh, again, it's not rule of thumb. Uh, if you will take all 15 minutes, then the host won't be very happy and you won't have any questions. So it's not giving good impression. So if you go for a scientific presentation, you have a good amount of data, how uh, you should prepare your presentation. Some of the points we already discussed, but how many number of slides should be there? So these are some basic layout. Of course, you need a title slide. Who are you? Where are you from? So you need to make one slide as a title slide. You should not speak everything on the slide because your introduction has already been given by uh, the host or a main speaker or somebody. So you just need to say like, this is me and I will be speaking about this work done by this. And I'm from this country or this university or something. That's it. Next slide should be table of content or what you will be speaking. So this is always not necessary. You may or may not need to have table of content, but if you think it's better to have a slide, you can have one slide, but go through quickly. Don't try to read one by one points or have six points or 10 points like table of content in a paper or a book. You need to have very few bullet points like what we discussed before and you go through quickly because you don't want uh, to waste your time in this table of content. You want audience to learn what you will be speaking in coming slides. So this is what you will do from there. Then next slide will be background and statement of problem. You need to give some idea about the background problem. Just a moment. Sorry. I had the similar problem like yesterday, second presentation. I forgot to connect it to battery, to main power. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible, sir. Okay, sorry. I forgot to connect it to power source. So I was saying you can have a title slide. 
then you need to have table of content like what you will be presenting and then you need to give some background when you go for a scientific presentation or in a conference like this everybody is not having the same knowledge like you you know it better than anybody in the audience let's say oil recovery for biomass for biofuel biofuel generation so you know it better so you need to give some framework some background they need to know what you are going to speak about then you need to explain the relevance why this work is important or why it is needed maximum two to three slides again depending on the time don't spend too many slides on this giving the highlight because your presentation is like a story it should have good beginning middle and end you should have a good story people should be able to correlate once you finish your presentation so give some background and the statement of problem and then you need to start with results and materials and methods with discussion this is the heart of your slide this is the middle of your presentation you need to make maximum slides on this results and materials and methods wherever needed don't say that i took 1 ml of water i centrifuged it and then i took the pellet at 4 degree centigrade and then i collected it then i used the rota vapor and blah 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 so you don't need to give a huge uh, description of what materials and methods you use but few words and if needed they can always come back to you and ask you what you need to insist more is on your results because this is what you came to show what results what data you have based on your research work so what you can do you can have four to six slides and this slide should have very less write up few words sentences should come from you you need to show some figures like site if i collected from really difficult site to get from then i need to show the picture or gps location in one corner i need to show the graphs because i want to highlight what results i observed such things you need to present and then after this if possible either separately or together you need to discuss so again it's a summary you are summarizing why you did this work what you reserve what you observed what others have seen you need to compare is it better than others or is it same or it's entirely different and why it makes sense you need to justify your hypothesis so you need to compare with the published ones so again don't forget to cite relevant references try to cite references which are recent of course some old references you don't have option you need to cite it but it should be relevant and recent references if possible some better journal from some different countries not just from your own country all those things will make big difference and then of course you need to acknowledge so one slide will be your acknowledgement that thank you for the grant or whatever or for university or my guides or team of people and everything and then this presentation should be finished so this is not what you need to go you always need to go for additional backup slides when you go for technical presentation what are this additional backup slides the data which you can't show them because of time constraint but you think it makes a difference this is an important data sometimes you will be surprised from the question answer session somebody will ask you to show this and you will have answer ready with you this will impress your audience it will show your sincerity and how ready you are so it may or may not be helpful but always have some backup slides how many slides again it's up to you there is no rule of thumb and then keep in mind some time for question and answer don't eat entire thing that there is no time for question and answer so again i will repeat this thing that once again this is not a rule of thumb that you need one slide maximum four slides for results and materials and methods everything you have to prepare your slides keeping in mind the amount of data you have and the content you have but it should not exceed so many numbers or so much time so in general a slide may take anywhere between 30 to 60 second if it's a technical slide if you are showing some graphs or some making of your um, specific data or conclusions it may take more than 60 seconds so this you have to always practice practice in front of mirror alone your relatives your friends in class or something so you have to practice before going and there is a feature in uh, powerpoint also you can check how much time does it take for you to uh, finish a presentation that option is also there or else you can simply use the slide and you can go for it so this is a quick recap of what we learned today what we should do how we should do so again less is more for a speech of 1 hour you should not have more than 20 to 25 slides create sections divide your work into parts and this will help you to organize your presentation 
avoid clutter clutter is never good clutter is enemy of clarity if things are messy it's not clear you won't have a clear perspective so always avoid the clutter so what you need to do you need to stick to three to five bullet points per slide at the most you should speak your slide should not speak they should look at you when you are giving a speech then some embarrassing mistakes spell check don't lose the credibility with misspelled words when you go for international conferences small small things will make a big difference because you are representing your university you are representing your country and you are representing your lab so you are an ambassador of many things which you are doing or your group of people are doing so don't do certain mistakes cite references of source from wherever you are taking are not good then use visuals wherever possible why because they are an engaging way when you have a picture people will be more attracted to see the image and how you correlate this image with something so it's quite good for communicating information then make it readable that's the first point actually that you need font size of 28 to 40 for headlines 18 to 28 for text this we already discussed and most important thing relax enjoy giving your talk if you are not comfortable you are tensed you are worried to talk about your own work how can you think that the audience will correlate with this work how will they enjoy it so be confident about your work if you have prepared everything properly if you have practiced everything properly and you have confidence or about your data or the negatives of your data that also you should know you need to know what are the problems which somebody might pinpoint or highlight you may not have to say it but others may say it so you need to know those things and if you know all those things then be confident don't worry it will go well so these are some additional uh, references uh, where you can get really good professional tips in this one session everything is not concluded if you want to go for how to make a proper business presentation classroom teaching you can go for many sites these are just the list of some of the slides there are plenty like you can go for this side from elsevier shows how to give a dynamic scientific presentation if you keep on looking on google springer taylor and francis elsevier and many other companies this publishing companies they keep on giving such free sessions and webinars now and then for students to learn how to write papers, how to uh, join some editorial board, how to start reviewing papers, how to make presentations, how to show your research data. All those things are freely given on such companies. You can keep on uh, having a check on those companies. And this is another example. It's the University of Leicester from UK. They are teaching their students in the university how to use PowerPoint, how to plan an effective presentation, how to use visual aids in your slides, and how to deliver an effective presentation. This is easier. I'm speaking in front of my computer, but the things are different. If I'm speaking this exact same thing in an auditorium in front of you, 100 or 300 people, then I have to do it differently. Here, it's much easier for me or anybody because I'm just looking at the screen, but it's not the way to give presentation. When you give presentation in an audience and a wider audience, you have to have a different body language. So all those things you need to learn and we learn from experiences. Then these are some ultimate guides. You can go through these sites also. And these are just the tip of an iceberg. There are plenty of websites, webinars, available free content, and everything is available nowadays where you can go and learn all those things. So you can refer this or you can refer many other. So with this, I would like to conclude the session here. I would like to acknowledge my university. This is an aerial image. This is the place where I'm speaking from right now. This is uh, country, Oman. Uh, this is Muscat. It's very near to Mumbai, actually uh, from Sur. It's very near. So I'm not quite far from you guys. I'm very near. And I would like to thank my team members, the journal, this webinar organizing agencies and everybody for giving me this opportunity. And thank you for your attention. And I hope it was informative. And yeah, if you have any questions or something, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you so ahead. much, sir. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for your nice presentation. And uh, people might have enjoyed this a lot. Now I request uh, Dr. Pramod Gaure to continue question and answer session. Uh, thank you, Rajesh, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, sir. Please go Yes, ahead. yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Sanket, sir. Uh, this is a really wonderful presentation. Everyone liked it. 
there are few questions in the chat box i will communicate with you first one is uh, how many tables or pictures a, a slide should have okay um how many it depends again uh, how much information do you have like i have i had a slide where it was a two column slide and i had eight or nine lines or something so if i want to um, let's say i want to present some technical data where i have while preparing graphs we have tables or in manuscripts we have tables so uh, it's better to have maximum two maximum two tables or maximum two uh, images or one slide containing one table and one graph because again the same problem is if you try to uh, infuse too much of information on one slide then it will become very difficult and you will end up spending more time than what you intend to let's say i have a table and i have a figure also why i need a table and a figure like yesterday it was explained by dr aparna that when you go for general writing you don't have to give a table and the same information in a picture you are not supposed to so you can either have a table or you can have an image so why tables are needed when you go for books or book chapters or journal writing tables are helpful because there people can read about it whereas in this case it's not needed when you go for uh, presentations pictures are better again it's not rule of thumb you can show uh, tables also you can show pictures uh, figures also because when tables are there you have to spend some more time you need to read what is there in the table or people need to spend more time in reading what is there on the table whereas in figures it's easier they will look at the figure sometimes it's complex let's say these are the images of graphs they can't understand clearly so you can make some highlights or animations where you want to focus their audience that they will see that you want to highlight that a is doing better than b in terms of growth let's say growth of microbe growth of microbes are better in a it's growing within 20 hours and second one is growing after 48 hours so these kinds of information are easier on graphs so again you can show table you can show graphs but don't go for more than two unless and until you just want to show comparison of four graphs like ftir image or nmr image of four samples then you can show it like these are the four ftir images or four nmr images and then you don't spend much time on explaining which group functional group is for what or 16s rdna is what or something have a highlight under that uh, slide or above the slide and this is what you need to convey the message that audience should look at the information if you have four graphs or four images that this are different work i did and this is the take home message so almost all the slides when you are showing the results should have a message or it should have a conclusion what they need to understand out of this data so always better to have less and you should be able to speak more okay sir thank you very much uh, next question is uh, what are the unique features of recently updated ms powerpoints few features they want to know new features are quite good like 2019 is uh, even the better version than 2016 it didn't go well it was more like an experimental uh, software 2016 is good so far 2016 it is good it is not free but you have license and you can use it as much as you want 365 is much better in office 365 if you purchase uh, annual license now um, i don't have it because it's quite expensive you have to pay money on a annual basis but they have excellent options for animations for video files for recordings you can make images you can incorporate many things access to so many different uh, files itself like you can select the kind of design you want for your slide uh, almost 70000 designs are available for free when you purchase that license so if you have money office 365 is excellent really good but it needs lots of money so if you don't have too much money stick to 2016 or 2010 which i was using 8 months ago 2010 is also good office 2010 but if you can afford you can you should go for office 2016 it's good you have several options recent ones are really good they did really good job but again okay. expensive yeah uh, next question is um, do we need to mention source of image or video that is used in our point presentation yes never forget to do this will you like it you did so much of hard work you prepared an excellent paper you prepared an excellent image and i will take it and i will show it on my name so it's not nice it's like stealing somebody's information so 
again like even if you write a paper you go for presentation nowadays it's 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 a crime if they will catch you like things were different before like plagiarism check softwares for images and everything is still difficult but if they will find it out or if a person or a scientific body will find out that you are using some content without proper acknowledgement it's not allowed you should not do it it's not nice just imagine it's happening with you you worked for 4 years and somebody is publishing a paper exactly copy paste of your thesis so it's similar to this so it's not good so why should we also do it we should at least acknowledge yes we have to show the source it's it's not uh, it's non -eth it's unethical it's not good uh, okay so next is uh, is it uh, formal to walk on the platform while presenting it depends on how comfortable you are because if you are not comfortable and if you are nervous or if your mic is not working properly then it might uh, not work well i prefer doing this it shows your confidence it shows your preparedness that you are well aware of what you are presenting there you should face your audience you should engage a wider group of audience not just in one corner or in front of your eyes or something and not just looking at the screen it's always better if you can do this yes it's good have a link okay. with what is going on behind and in front of you it's good yes sir next question is can we use reference softwares like mendeley and uh, other uh, softwares in powerpoint presentations uh powerpoint presentations you don't need all those things actually because you have limited time even let's say for a plenary lecture you give maximum 60 minutes of talk so you won't need a slide every slide with one reference or something so it's better to do it manually mendeley or um, as a software um, endnote endnote is also good you can use mendeley of course mendeley is free there are several softwares such softwares are good to write papers or write book chapters or books or something or or doing research for making your thesis you can make a library and you can use it it's not needed for powerpoint because in thesis you will have hundreds of pages and 500 of 200 of references in your powerpoint presentation you will have hardly 10 maximum 25 that you can always select by yourself and there is no proper format of uh, citing references and everything as long as you are citing and acknowledging it's sufficient okay sir uh, next question is uh, can we record our voice voice in ms powerpoint while making ppt oh yes yes there yeah. is an icon if you go to the button insert two options are there audio and video just click on the button audio and then the icon will come you can speak this is the way we are giving lectures in the classroom now like students have access to our slides they can uh, refer to slides at any time they want and whatever you want to speak about the slide it's already there that option is there in 2016 you can embed your voice also not just video yes sir uh, next question is can we put link in the powerpoint presentation and after I means click it in front of the audience and uh, show the website oh yes you can but you need access to internet this is good way if you want to show uh, with some work or your university or anything but you need access to internet or else the pc should have the source otherwise it's especially for web links you need uh, internet yes next question is uh, which type of uh, formal background is uh, attractive or what is your opinion about having backgrounds ah uh, it's a matter of choice somebody may like wearing a red shirt somebody may like only white formal shirt so the key is to make it simple you can always have as much as possible with you or so much uh, colors and everything so see the trick with colors in background and the font is uh, this is again from experience I used to put uh, colorful backgrounds for different slides, and then the font size and fonts are different in color. So the problem is the compatibility. Let's say uh, you are going to present something somewhere else in a USB or a CD, and their projector is not upgraded, and it is not supporting the color combination. And you have practiced it well; it's excellent. You are confident, and the moment you will start the presentation in some country or somewhere else, it's not red anymore; it's violet. and your font is not white anymore it's yellow so you can't read anything so there is a risk involved you can make it pretty and everything but it's not advisable better to go for a simple scheme where not so many different combinations of colors are there so risk is less 
if you go for colorful combinations it may look good if it works or else it will be a disaster it happens it happens many times yes sir uh, last question for this session from audiences uh, is it possible to overwrite our own old powerpoint presentations uh, because of time constraints we can uh, do such editing and save Why? time you can do it definitely you can run fast if i understood the question correctly and if you have more number of slides and if you want to run so this only happens when you are not well prepared if you know you have been given 10 minutes to speak and 5 minutes for question and answer you should prepare it accordingly and if you think more data is needed keep it as a backup slide and only show important things or you have to run quickly like instead of 30 seconds per slide you have to go fast because you want to show as much as possible so yeah it's okay if you want to go for more number of slides you can go for it but try to avoid this try to avoid yeah it means this is uh, this is like uh... a question from teachers i think this is from a teacher that uh, they have to do uh, take continuous lectures one after the other and they get less time to pre uh, prepare their powerpoint presentation so they are asking can we edit it and uh, use it like oh yes 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 you can definitely as long With as you have access time to constraint. yeah yeah you can edit it as long as you have access to the software the same software where you prepared it like i prepared slides in 2016 and if i want to edit those things in another version 2010 or 2007 it may not work it may backfire but as long as the platform is same you can definitely do it and yeah nothing wrong you can always edit it on the go uh, yes sir now uh, final question that have recently come up uh, is it uh, okay if we keep our powerpoint presentation at the place where we have a uh, attended the conference most of the time we go for conferences and there we uh, used to just uh, upload our presentation in their computer and we forget it so is it advisable or shall we carry our powerpoint presentation in some other format that no one can edit our data well it's a tricky question um, it depends if you already published it or see it's a tricky question there is no straight forward answer for this because there is always a risk if you don't get virus from them like if you give a cd then they will have the copy of the cd if i put my usb disk or thumb disk then i may bring virus which is still okay but if i leave my presentation so you can try if you are coming from a university or you are doing such work where you are expecting some publication not as a proceeding then you can always request them that this is a proprietary information we don't intend you to copy paste it or we don't want to leave the presentation here and if the organizers are fine they won't make a fuss but it's entirely up to you you can always request there is no harm you can say it politely that okay sir or okay ma'am i don't want my presentation to be here my guide wants it to be removed or something we are writing a paper or something but if you say like this you are already presenting your work so people are having access to your work so it's it's entirely depending entirely upon you so if you don't want you can always request and they can delete it or you can delete it after the presentation no problem yes sir uh, with this we have come to the end of question answer session thank you very much for answering all the queries that are raised by the participants about the powerpoint presentation skills uh, thank you very much sir uh, now okay. i hand over the session to rajesh sir over to you rajesh sir yeah thank you thank you very much sir now i kindly request dr javed pare head of the department of environmental science from college of jammu kashmir to introduce our uh, another speaker dr rahul zamdade okay uh, dr javed pare uh, please unmute yourself yes please thank you dr rajesh hello and good evening to all the participants and organizing members in the two days international webinar on data presentation in research article and its publication i would like to introduce our second speaker of this session dr rahul arvin Dr Rahul Arvind is working as a specialist post doctoral researcher 
at the Sharjah Research Academy, Government of Sharjah, UAE. He joined the academy in two th 2017 at the Plant Biotech Laboratory and is working on the developing DNA bank and DNA barcodes for the plants from UAE. Simultaneously, he is working on developing a bioinformatics workflow using an artificial intelligence machine, learning approach for the accurate species identification. For this work, he has an affiliation with the Ludwig Maxim University, Munich, Germany. For presenting this research, Dr. Rahul received an international travel grant from UAE for the eighth International Barcode of Life Conference, Norway. In India, he has an affiliation with the Birla Institute of Technology and Paul Hubbard Center for DNA Barcoding and Biodiversity Studies. While he did his PhD, he is also a former teaching assistant from the Department of Zoology, Chavan Institute of Science, Satara. With his diverse research experience, he has published more than 1,000 DNA barcodes and various research articles in high impact factor journals. Today, he will apprise us and share his knowledge on the use of Microsoft Excel data analysis for research and data publication. We welcome you and formally request you to proceed the session, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Javed. I thank organizers uh, and uh, uh, the participants. So yeah, let's begin. Good evening. Let's begin with the session. I'll start sharing my screen. So I think my screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Great. So yes, I'll start with my presentation. So today we are going to see data analysis uh, using MS Excel. Sir, please match my GPI. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, just a minute. I'll just make some adjustments over here. Yeah, so I am affiliated to Plant Biotech Laboratory, Sharjah Research Academy, uh, UAE. I am, uh, yeah, I'm residing just near the Dr. Sanket uh, Joshi's uh, uh, country, Oman. And uh, let's, let's begin with the presentation. So today we'll uh, have an overview on what is data analysis, overview on uh, um, MS Excel for data analysis, how to carry out data analysis with Excel, then process of data analysis, uh, in which we'll see basic data manipulations, basic functions in Excel. I think you all would be uh, knowing the basic functions, but still we are going to uh, revise those functions because we will be using them uh, today in today's presentation. So functions using absolute and relative references we'll be seeing. Uh, we'll be seeing introduction to filtering, pivot tables and pivot charts. And then advanced graphing and charting where we'll see how to prepare graphs in the way like that can be used for publication in uh, good impact factor journals. And finally, we'll see how to publish our uh, research data. So basically what is this data analysis? What comes in your mind when we uh, first uh, see what data analysis? So, So it is patterns, connections, and relationships. We look at the data to find a meaning out of it, which is data analysis. Similarly, in research, once data is collected, what is next step? Next step is to get insight out of that data. So let's understand with the analogy on diversity and distribution of spiders. So how we'll collect data and how we'll get information out of it. Basically first, after collecting information on species occurrence, at different sampling sites, one will identify patterns of species distribution out of that data. So what it can, uh, it can be, uh, how it can be analyzed to uh, reveal the analysis. So for example, species, specific species occurrence in particular habitat only can be recognized and which will uh, conclude like 
the species is restricted to few sampling sites only which might be distribution pattern according to the habitat so we concluded this data um, based on the data that was collected uh, during the species sampling so next we'll see what is overview of data analysis to derive actionable intelligence from data it is needed to be inspected cleaned and transformed so basically when we have data in our hand we should inspect the data we should clean it we should transform it in a way so that we can use it for analysis second what it is of way to carry out data analysis so there are diverse ways that can be used in different uh, fields such as business sciences and even social sciences uh, then there are various methods for data analysis which are largely based on two core areas first is quantitative method and second is qualitative method first of all what is quantitative data so it is information that can be counted or expressed numerically which can be raw data it can be used in maths computation and statistical test it can be represented visually in form of tables and graphs so this is quantitative data but what the thing is with quantitative data that we cannot it cannot predict or give solutions and it cannot help in ranking the problems in case of qualitative data information is in form of words pictures symbols and observations so it can generate new ideas for research or interventions it is very useful in program evaluation too so what it provides it provides depth of understanding and it may define problem okay so let's see why ms excel can be used for data analysis firstly navigating through data could be a nightmare in itself as we have we could have used data and to just navigate through data or to organize or to manage the data is very difficult so here excel can be used to organize your data properly and to navigate through it it's quite tricky to explore and process large data sets analyzing it could well could very well be a unique challenge because there are many softwares out of out there which rely on particular coding language or a particular program where it is difficult for a basic researcher to get acquainted with such kind of coding programs and languages and to analyze data out of it it is very difficult then we can use excel for this kind of analysis so i that that's why we mentioned like here excel can come to your rescue so how because it contains functions that can process a large amount of data quite effectively and easily anybody can use them and analyze the data so what do you need you just need to get acquainted you just need to use you just need to go through various examples and once you get used to it or get acquainted to it you find it easy for your analysis next it's not necessary either to remember all functions so basically there is formulation for analyzing the data or there are some statistical tests where you have to enter formulas in the cell then only it, we can able to get analysis out of it so it is not necessary to remember all functions you what you have to do you can just google it and find out function you need if still you don't don't get your query resolved then post it in various excel forums i i also usually do this i used to post my problems in excel form i'll show you next slide where uh, and how i did it so with speed simplicity and accuracy excel is not just useful but it can be imperative for your data analysis so here is screenshot of my gmail you can see like uh, in forums i have asked many questions so i have a huge amount of data which which consist of genetic distances species and variations so i have to manage my data i have to organize it and i have to analyze it sometimes it is very difficult to use basic functions of excel so i can use third party addons and even uh, some uh, program codes vba scripts for my analysis but i am not a programmer i cannot design all those right so what i do i used to post this queries in excel forums you can see mr excel forum is here excel help forum is here 
so there are many excel forums out there by but i use this two mostly you can see like uh, there is reply to my each and every message and they have been resolved and i have used those uh, formulas in my analysis and even i published good amount of uh, results using those formulas and they are very accurate because they have been all designed by experts next we'll see how to carry out data analysis with excel so you might wonder how data analysis actually works so here is an overview of the step wise process of data analysis for you first data collection data can be collected from various sources this data may not contain any insights in the present form so you can collect data from websites you can collect data by your own through field collection you can fetch data from third parties and you can use that anal that for analysis but just a data cannot contain any insight as we need to get something out of it therefore it is it needs to be basically first processed and then cleaned so then comes data processing the where collected data needs to be organized this would entail structuring the data to make it compatible for various analysis tools for instance you may need to place the data in rows and columns in a table for further analysis so i think you all are aware of this like excel is made up of rows and columns where we can generate a table and we can place the data in those format so that data is organized and can be used for the analysis next comes data cleaning and organizing organizing data as it could still contain duplicate items so if you have to remove some duplicate items out of it you can remove it and organize it properly a few may few errors may also creep in so there might be few errors i'll show you in further slide what errors we might get and how we can get rid out of that next data cleaning is the way to correct these errors and make the data accurate so we'll see how to clean a data and how get rid of these errors and make our data set accurate next comes data analysis so there are numerous techniques for data analysis where data usual visualization can be used to project data in a graphic format we are going to see this also at the end how the data which we have collected we will also collect the data then how data is processed how it is cleaned and how we get a good graphic figure out of it which can be used for publications then correlation or regression analysis are well known statistical models can also be used Uh, yes excel do has some limitations where all kind of statistical tests cannot be performed as shown by um, uh, in yesterday's presentation uh, so by anil dr anil jogdan so he showed uh, the software where we can use different statistical test to test our hypothesis this cannot be done in excel uh, it has restrictions but yes we can use third party addons for this will show and you will see uh, further like which addons could be used for uh, testing such kind of uh, statistical test or a hypothesis so while data sorry while data analysis may seem like the last step of this process the finding findings of data analysis need to be communicated in a structured way to the end user so this is very this is where some of the techniques of data visualization such as tables and charts can prove quite useful as they uh, they can communicate the message quite clearly So the process of data analysis with excel so basically we'll start with curation so when it comes to data analysis in excel here's how you or we will go about it first is data collection so what we are going to do today we will use web based data we'll clean that web based data then we'll export that data uh, explore that data using pivot table and we'll see how to visualize this data and get Uh, information out of it in form of graphics so let's get started so i think you all are aware of this website this is worldometer where you can see live coronavirus cases so i think this screenshot is quite old from june 18 2020 so that time i have prepared uh, this uh, slides so uh, these were the cases of coronavirus at that time so there is a database here when you scroll the uh, website down you can see this table over here so in this table also there are sub uh, uh, tabs like europe north america these are continents the data is organized according to days and many more things 
but you can see the front end of the data and it has some limited columns. How we can import all of its data, including this continents and everything in our Excel, we'll see how. So we have opened Excel, I have having screenshots of Excel actually, I'm not opening in Excel actually. So I'm using laser pointer over here so that it, uh, it's, my cursor is visible to you all. So yes, so I've opened the Excel and what we'll do, we'll go to data, then we'll go to from web, you can see over here. When you click over here, we, there is a dialog box or a wizard which opens. So you can see there is an here arrow over here. Uh, we, we have to click this arrow when our website comes and uh, this arrow will be next to the tables where you, we want to select the data and we want to exp import that data. So we'll add website name over here. So I've added it and we have opened the site in this uh, wizard. So now you can see it will having some, giving some uh, security alerts and everything. Just say yes, yes. And yes, you can get uh, the same icon over here, which is blue in color. This means it is active now and we can uh, get this data set. Just click over this icon and it will be uh, ticked. And next is to import. So Microsoft Excel is importing. It is contacting the server for information. And then it will ask like in which cell we want to import, just select the cell and press okay. So it is getting data and here is your data. So now this is the data which it has imported from the web server. So this data will have every information about continents, uh, the cases which is occurring, um, every, uh, any uh, one case, every people, or every person, which th this column was specific, specifically columns were not shown in our uh, website. Even the day wise data, if you scroll this down, you will get day wise data. So now we are having um, all data imported over here and which is not arranged properly. Yeah, even though it is arranged in a columns and rows format, which is good for us and will save our time. What we'll do, we'll just remove the data which is not necessary for us. So just select the rows and select the columns. So you have to do, do this one by one because this is presentation I have shown it uh, for uh, just uh, our visualization. So just select it one by one, rows one time, column one time and just get rid of it. So we have deleted those. Now we'll delete data which don't, we don't need uh, at the bottom. So you can see there are about 1700 rows. So you can imagine how much uh, huge amount of data we have imported. So just select what we don't need and just delete it. So now here the data is with you, uh, data of your interest. Okay, so then we will uh, add some filters to it so that we can organize our data. So click on over the data, data tab here you can see filter, click over filter. And uh, basically before clicking over filter, just make sure that your uh, cursor or your selected cell is number one cell, A1, so that it automatically selects all um, cells which have values in it or text in it. And it will not select the cells which don't have text. So just be careful like uh, to make the cursor over uh, the cell over selected over here, A1 and press filter. So as soon as you click over filter, the filters appear for your columns. So now we will be able to easily sort our data from A to Z or Z to A and so on. So next is we can be able to sort data manually also, which is called as custom sorting. So when we select this cell and right click, you can get option of sort. In sort, you can just select, select custom sort. When you open custom sort, this cells will appear, this wizard will appear. Just go over here, just click a down arrow and say select custom sort. When we select custom sort, it will ask what kind of custom sort you want. So it has its own, own uh, uh, these things, parameters over here, but we want according to our convenience. So I have selected continents, some of the continents. I want to begin with Europe, then Asia, and so on. So I want to sort all of my data or, or in this column according to the continents what I have entered. So just paste over here. Excuse me, sir. 
Yes. Sir, excuse me, please. Sir, we are looking two cursors here. Therefore, we are getting confused. Where are you pointing? Two cursors are getting there. Okay, so I'll I, I have yeah, to yeah. remove the pointer. Mm -hmm. so I think you can uh, see my cursor, right? Now it is one cursor. Now we are not able to see your cursor, but the highlighter that uh, you are using in red color, we were uh, seeing two highlighters there, two dots. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Can you select other? I have selected other pen. Now pen is okay. Can you move your pen on the slide? Yeah, I'm moving my pen. No, sir. It is not visible, sir. So like this is okay? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. now it is okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just go tick mark. Do, I'll be doing tick mark so that uh, uh, you will be able to see like where I'm uh, doing the process actually. Mm -hmm. So just click yes, okay. And... Okay, yeah. So over here, we have to select continents column. So I'm going to sort in continent. So select continent column and then select OK. Okay. So yeah. So your data is sorted and now you have clean data. So with the clean data, which we have organized properly in rows and columns, and we have uh, sorted it according to our interest we will be doing basic data manipulations over here. So in case, if you are retrieving unformatted data, what we have to do, it is essential to format our clean data in Excel form, uh, to Excel form. So this is done by finding and, uh, finding and correcting the errors in the data set. Then replacing the incomplete or inaccurate parts with the correct ones. So in Excel, data can be organized by using the techniques given below. First of all, removing spaces, then merging and splitting columns and compiling two or more tables by joining or matching. So we'll see how this can be done. So we'll have another example for this where we copy data manually and we don't import data from the web source because importing data from the web source, it uh, does much things by itself. But when we copy and paste data, it is having some issues like we have some back blank spaces before and after the words, we need to merge or split columns and so on. So we'll see how. So this is a fish based website. So in this website, what I have, I'm going to do, I'm going to select the uh, threatened species in the information and uh, country uh, column. And I want to get threatened species from India. So I just selected it and after this, this table is appeared and I'm going to copy the all, all information in this table in my Excel. So I just copied all information and I have to paste in Excel. So uh, here comes the another point to trim the data to remove blank spaces. When I paste in Excel, what happens, you can see there are some white spaces over here before and after the species. So when we sort this data, you can see like they remain there only and other are sort from A to Z according to the A to uh, ascending order. So what to do in this case, what we have to do, we have to trim this kind of data. So we will trim whole column. We'll add first a column over here named as trim species and we'll enter a formula. So formula is here trim B2. B2 is the, B is the number of uh, column number and two is the row number cell. So trim B2 and enter and just scroll it down. You will get all white spaces removed from your data, from your uh, species. But you can see the spaces between the genus, genus and species have not been removed. So it, it knows like we have added gap here, gap here and we don't want actually gap afterwards and before. So it has already trimmed the unnecessary gaps. So in this way, you can trim the data. You can copy this data and just paste, paste using this form and don't paste the formulas because if you copy and paste directly, it will paste formulas and you get nothing. So you have to paste this, paste as a text and your data will be uh, paste in text format. Yes. So, uh, 
yeah now you can sort your data and you see like it has been sorted from a to z next is splitting columns so here in 38 category i want to split the 38 code from the vulnerable this is a 38 category from the 38 code so what i have to do i'll just again add a one more column over here we'll select the category and just go in the data tab and in data tab you can see this tab text to columns so you, when you hover over text to column you can see what it does actually so when we click it this wizard opens and it will ask how to uh, how to make columns so it is like by delimitation or by fixed width so we'll select delimitation and just do next again it 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 ask like you want to uh, do it by tab space or by semicolon and so on but we have open bracket over here so we will select the others and we'll add open bracket over here so in this way we have added open bracket and now you can you can see in the preview like it has separated it from the column from its original column and just click next and finish so there is already data you want to replace it we'll see we'll say okay and here it is so we have uh, got data in this column it asked whether we have to replace all data because we, it can see data in f column but we know that there are no more extra um, uh, words that can be shifted in this column so that's why we said okay so now we have data over here so what we can do we can just do control h find and replace and you can uh, add open bracket close bracket over here and just say next and all done it has replaced the open brackets so in this way we can separate uh, the column or we can uh, make your uh, column one column into two by this way uh, by using this function text to column then merging columns how we can merge the column again we have added the merge column uh, over here and we'll again merge thread category and a thread code together so for this what we have to do we have to enter a formula called as concatenate so equal to in the bracket concatenate d2 so this is d column and this is cell number 2 then e2 so please remember like uh, the uh, cases and the uh, brackets or uh, everything is important over here because if we don't add or we don't close the formula properly it will give again error so if we open the bracket we have to close it bracket by sure then uh, yeah formula is completed and we enter it so it again what it did it compiled it so we'll see what we did in formula so d2 again in uh, double quotes we added open bracket so in double quotes you can add anything uh, which might be sign which might be word also if you want and it will connect the word or sign between d2 and e2 so that's why it connected open bracket again we connected close bracket and this way we got the same thing what we have intended to again we have uh, so dragged the column down and we got all in this way next function is vlookup where we compile two or more table data together so here i am having two tables this is one table threat uh, threatened species of india and second table status of fish species occurrence in india so in this i need occurrence to be added in table one table one i need to have occurrence column so uh, so just for your information both tables have same uh, information but it is not arranged in the same way like it it will have same family same number of species but it doesn't have column of occurrence so what we are we are going to do we are going to match species from table number table number 1 to the table number 2 and with matching the species we will import the value in front of it which is occurrence in this table so that we get accurate uh, values over here so for this wh what we have to do we have to uh, go to formulas here is a type of formulas in this just select lookup and reference function uh, reference tab 
here you will find the lookup function so this is lookup function just select this lookup function so when you hover over it it will let you know what it does actually next so this wizard will open will add a lookup value over here so what lookup value must be added it is very easy so we'll just see how we'll first select uh, uh, b3 so in b column third number this is the species which i will be matching in the table number 2 so i have selected the whole table h and i h is to i whole uh, two columns so it will match this species from these two columns it is considering this two column as a table and what you'll do what we'll do we'll let him know like from which column we want to import the value actually so we want to import column uh, value of occurrence which is i and it is second column that we have uh selected so between h and i i is the second column so value 2 over here then range lookup what should be added in range lookup so i have added false what false mean you can read over here what true means and what false means false means exact match it will not uh, uh not import any other relevant matches so it will import only exact match so we have selected false and say okay so in this way uh, we are able to get the exact value so uh, this species arborectis gargorensis is endemic so if we see uh, in this um, yeah it is it is not visible in the screenshot it might be down somewhere here so it is endemic now we can what we can do we'll just scroll it down or we just drag it down to get formula duplicated replicated in the same column so next we'll get to see what are basic functions in excel i think you all know this function sum average count if max and min index and match so you can refer to this website also they are having very good uh, information about this functions so we'll not go into detail for every function we'll select some of it so uh, here is our database of uh, coronavirus uh, details so we have selected the population column so what we want to do we want to know uh, what is total number of population in the selected 24 countries i have selected some 24 countries i have to know what is population of this 24 countries so we have to sum this equals to sum so it is necessary whenever you add a formula you should add equal sign then and then only excel will accept it as a formula otherwise it will accept it as a text so we have to add this sign and we have to enter the formula over here sum open bracket and we'll add the range overall range from n2 to n25 and we'll get sum out of it so this is total number of population similar way we can calculate average and count next is if function so if uh, the population is more than uh, 100 million it will give us true and if it is not it will give us false i think you know all this basic functions but just we'll go overlook uh, this function so i have added n is to n is to select all n column uh, so is equal to if n is to n more than 100 million true otherwise false so here you will get the values accordingly next is you will see like the plus sign appears when you get cursor over here you will see plus sign appears if you having more than 1000 rows imagine how it will be um, difficult to just drag it down every time and uh, go through it sometimes it happens you release the cursor and the formula is not copied many things could happen so you, when you see plus sign just double click that plus sign like this and you will get all uh, row which is having values filled with the formula so there is no need to drag every time just double click this plus sign okay next we'll go we are going to see like i want to have minimum number of deaths what is count of minimum number of deaths and what is the count of maximum number of deaths then in which country this minimum deaths occurred and which country is the maximum deaths occurred so we'll enter the formula accordingly so we have selected which uh, this is the total death what we have going to uh, go through so equal to minimum just having a minimum function minimum open bracket add the column we don't need to mention like from e2 or e1 to this this you can just add e is to e this will select a whole column and it will calculate 
numbers uh, out of from this column and give the minimum value so this will be like uh, 76 is minimum and maximum same formula this is the maximum value so where are minimum deaths that have been occurred so what here comes the index function what we have to do we have to index the country b to b b is to b so whole b is to b column is selected so we have to index first the country then it needs to match what needs to match it needs to match b2 b2 is here it needs to match match b2 76 to whom to the e is to e so this e column so it will match this value to the e column and it will return uh, the true value so we need exact value that's why we mentioned it as false and when we enter we get here so minimum uh, deaths have been occurred in qatar and the maximum deaths that have been occurring usa so in this way we can get uh, analyzed through minimum and maximum function next is relative and absolute cell function so what is it so basically when we type e2 e2 is cell number so we'll go with an example here so this is an example so in E2, what we want, we want percent of infected from the continent population. So how much persons, uh, how much percent does is USA contributing to the total infected uh, patients in the continent? So we are going to calculate a percentage out of it. So equals to C2, this is C2 value divided by I2. So this is another table. You can see this is another table which is highlighted in, in yellow color. So this is another table. So we have, we need uh, the total population to divide out of it to get a percentage. So I2, this is the, this is the, this is the value of North America, total population of North America. So total cases divided by total population into 100, we, get, we are going to get a percentage. So this formula is entered and we've got 0.37% uh, USA contributes to the infected uh, po oral population from the North American continent. Next, we'll just drag it down because we need uh, same formula and uh, we want value for Mexico. So we drag it down and we drag it sideways. But you can see the value over here. I've highlighted is red because it is wrong. Why it is wrong? Because it has taken the reference cell as Asia, not North America, because we just dragged it. And even in the case of column, when we drag this side, it has taken the reference from the uh, column number J as it has to take the reference from column number I, but this didn't, didn't happen. So here comes the relative and absolute cell references. So what it can be done, we can do in this way. So uh, here, if we add a dollar sign, you can, you can, you can check this point when if we add a dollar sign after the column and uh, near to the row what it will do it will not change the row the row doesn't change when we add a dollar sign before row similarly if we add a dollar sign before column it will not change the column and if we add dollar sign before and after it will not change row as well as the column so here what we'll do here what we'll do we add the dollar sign in this way such that it should not change the rows and columns. So we use this formula so that it doesn't change the reference column for North America. And this way, what we did, we dragged it here and downwards and we get an accurate value for Mexico or the countries from North America. But in case of uh, Asia, you have to again design the same uh, function or same formula. Next is data exploration using pivot table. Here to perform initial investigation to find out patterns in data, then to spot anomalies to test hypothesis and check assumptions. So during this, to make an ease of analysis and handling, pivot table comes into the picture. It is one of the Excel's most powerful feature and we do use it more frequently if we have huge amount of data and we have to get uh, that data uh, sorted in particular way or analyzed in a particular way instead of getting it analyzed manually. So it allows to extract 
the significance from the large detailed data sets so excel pivot table is a summary table that lets you count average sum and perform other calculations according to the reference features so we'll see how again we'll get an import of uh, this database now this database is a little bit updated but not the recent one anyways we have imported again this uh, table over here and uh, we have selected our table we need to select the tables which we need to be added in a pivot table so i want everything to be added so i've selected all table and just go to uh, over here insert and uh, when i hover over here you will see pivot charts and you see what the pivot table does actually so click on this uh, <clears throat> click on this pivot chart <clears throat> here opens the wizard you have to add uh, it it takes automatically the table range so we don't need to add a table range but it asks whether you have to um, make this pivot table in new worksheet or in the existing worksheet so i have uh, requested in new worksheet in order to avoid any more confusion over here and just say okay so here is a new worksheet and it has shown like sheet number 3 it has opened the table here all the uh, table fields have been added so what i'll do i have to select some fields out of it and i have to make the new pivot table accordingly that can be used for analysis so i have selected continent over here as you can see uh, the continent comes a uh, continent information uh, comes where i have selected the total death so you can see here is count of total deaths but i don't want count of total i want sum of total deaths so in this case what we can do you can see the this this part down over here so here is the fields uh, that can the fields uh, area where we can add or remove fields so in uh, this category which is axis category we can add continents and in values category we can add the number of deaths so just click i just click over here count of the total deaths and i am able to see the right click uh, i am going to see the value field setting open the value field settings and here your value field settings so i have selected uh, it is already i selected default is count but i want it sum so i want a total value of death so select sum and say okay so you will get total uh, sum of deaths same way uh, i have i am going to add other columns so in this way, as you add columns you can see the graph is been developed over here so graph is being developed every time when i add the columns so i have added total deaths total recovered total cases in this way and similarly you can see along with the sum i have added standard deviation of total deaths this is done in the same way we did for the sum again drag and what you have to do again uh, select the same column or drag the column to this values when you drag the column it can be drag as many times as you want and you can play with it you can sum it you can add standard deviation you can do counting and everything so just right click over here and select what you want uh, from it so in this way i have calculated sum and standard deviation also so for all again i have copied it i have pasted it in some different uh, side or different sheet so i don't want pivot table to be interfered in my analysis now and uh, i have got my values that i am going to use so i have uh, made a simple table and added filters i have highlighted it to show you like i have i am having the standard deviation column differently so next uh, goes we'll go for data visualization so data visualization is a technique through which we can explore data data visualization is the presentation of data in a pictorial or graphical format in excel there are two features charts and pivot charts which are most popular for data visualization so using the data from pivot charts will construct a high quality figure essential for publication so the data will use the same data Uh, that we have uh, we have taken from the previous uh, part so so the number of continents total number of deaths recovered active cases total cases and their standard deviations so remember in statistics standard deviation or standard error is important to get information out of it 
otherwise the data uh, the analysis is not much informative so just uh, uh, in in the insert select recommended charts and in recommended charts you will be able to get this dialog box so i am selecting the first figure over here and i say okay so let's see the figure the figure is this so you can see uh, there is an issue in this figure what the issue is like you cannot see the values of australia why because they are already less and cannot be uh, plotted against these many values which are high as compared to the australia what should be done in this case in this case we can do um, uh, we can use another axis or another kind of uh, axis called as logarithmic axis so i have just made it uh, i've dragged the figure and just right click and click format axis so here the right panel opens a format axis and here you can see logarithmic scale option just click over log logarithmic scale and you will see like uh, now it has included logarithmic scale from 1 10 100 1000 and you can see to the uh, values from australia in this way you can uh, optimize if you are having lower values as compared to the other values in the data set so in this way we are having the uh, chart ready so let's see how we can format it for our uh, publication so just uh, you will see okay uh, at the corner of the figure when you click figure at the corner you see plus sign just click that plus sign and uh, you can see the chart elements in the chart element you can add or remove axis axis titles grid lines error bars and everything so we want to add standard deviations over the figure so we selected error bars options and this will select standard deviation so yeah it is asking negative or zero values cannot be plotted correctly because this is logarithmic chart and yes we cannot plot negative or zero values values above one can be visualized in the logarithmic scale that's why this is giving uh, an error say okay because we don't have any negative values and it doesn't matter with our uh analysis so we'll say okay and here uh, here comes the error bar so error bar you can see it has calculate error bar by its own it does not consider standard deviation uh, columns over here because we didn't uh, gave this values for the uh, for the charting so let's add those values so right click and just uh, right click the chart area or the bar and say format error bars so again a right panel will open the format uh, error bars option you can see um, here uh, in custom you can see in custom here you can see a specify value so we have to select a specify value and it will open a dialog box okay so let's uh, let's give the value of uh, africa so i have selected the standard deviation of total uh, total deaths sorry not for africa this is for total deaths so yeah we are going to add uh, standard deviation for total deaths you can add same for positive and negative so that uh, our figure has the uh, lower and upper uh, this thing quartile so just uh, select this and say okay so you can see now error bars have been appeared this is uh, for Uh, total deaths in similar way we have uh, input given input for the data and we have got error bars for all now our figure is a little bit uh, informative which is having standard deviation values according to the uh, data so next is to format the figure i need to click on design i have clicked on design and you can see change colors so basically this figure looks uh, like it has been drawn for, uh, from the excel and it has not been formatted uh, it doesn't has uh, much good formatting and information so we'll try to uh, change uh, the formatting so let's try to change colors so i like monochromatic so i have selected monochromatic colors then then we'll see uh, if we have better chart type from uh, this option so we selected chart types and you can see there are many chart types if you want to change so this is change chart type dialog box which you have selected from over here so change chart chart type and uh, columns lines and many more things uh, i am interested in area area chart it is little bit more self explanatory we don't need to read each and every column in this uh, area chart so i'll select it and say okay now you are having area chart over here 
now it is very easy to understand like uh, the black represents total number of cases which is yes dominant over all other parameters or other um, uh, other uh, these things parameters then the downwards is total recovered and this are active cases so total number of death is also small uh, which is represented in uh, dark gray color so anyways even if we can see this as a huge area is covered but don't forget this is a logarithmic chart and as we go up it increases this logarithmically so uh, even error bars uh, sorry standard deviation values have been also plotted on uh, the area chart so yeah we have the figure ready next uh, is to add axis title so as i told uh, previously just click over plus sign add axis titles and you will be able to edit those titles so next i am having um, we'll prepare one more chart and uh, i am having a values which, which i have again taken from online uh, databases so this is typical incubation uh, period for different diseases including covid 19 so uh, what is minimum incubation period which is maximum and what is average incubation period for the disease so we will be plotting in the same way i am not selecting all options i am just selecting till 16 uh, 6 uh, excel number uh, 16 and this will be having some few rows which will be excluded so just uh, select the data and uh, in in the previously i'll, I'll just let you let you know like insert we have to go to insert tab see by selecting a data and in insert tab you will find uh, uh, the uh, yeah recommended charts option so just click over recommended charts and this dialog box will open so now you have to select uh, the chart out of it so i am interested in line chart which will be able to represent my data uh, properly so i am selecting line chart and say okay so here is my line chart but uh, this is very basic right and uh, it is having uh, not much uh, i want it to be much more informative so how we can format the line chart uh, for this so that we can uh, we can clearly show like uh, yes this is the uh, low incubation period high and average uh, can we enter some uh, heat uh, heat position so that uh, it is lower at uh, the basic less value and the increase in uh, the density of color uh, increases in the higher value so we'll show how it is done so just select it select the points and uh, format data series a uh, right panel will open again in this what we did we in this we have we, we went to the line option and we selected no line so we don't want line we just want points over here so similarly i did for all and so now we are having a chart with no lines so what i am going to do i am going to connect them together so for mers or from uh, this disease i'm going to connect this points three points together so that i'm able to show the uh, lower value over here this is average value and this is this is the higher value so yeah so i'm going to show uh, i want to represent the same in data and this chart so let's see how it can be done yes so in this there is an option add chart elements over here in insert here is add chart elements here you can select the lines in lines uh we'll say uh, high and low lines so select this option high and low lines and you can see the high and low lines have appeared so now i need to change the chart type so that uh, it will look more informative so uh, just okay so what we can do we can uh, select design in design tab uh, i have selected this chart uh, i think this chart is much more uh, informative so yeah so here come that chart now what we'll do we want to have Uh, the lines over here uh, to be visible and properly so that we can add a kind of heat uh, map to heat uh, to it which is lower at the base and higher at uh, the top position which will represent the gradual uh, increase in the incubation period okay so here we are going to 
open the colors first i have selected line i have selected line over here and just uh, you can uh, click over here to change the color and to change the weight so i have selected to change the weight and i have selected 0.6 weight over here so which is which shows broad line and now my lines are broad and clearly visible so next is to uh, select gradient line so previously it was a solid line but we selected now gradient line so that i can show a kind of heat map process so here you can see gradient so gradient slope or steps yeah gradient slopes so you can drag this cursor so that you, uh, or select the exact uh, uh, gradient uh, color from this and you can drag this cursor to minimize or maximize the maximize the gradient at that position so in this way i have done it and you can see now yeah you can see now clearly like it is uh, gradient uh, density is less at the lower and it is higher at the uh, top position so this shows like uh, this is lower value uh, lower incubation period this is average incubation period and this is the uh, higher incubation period so this is a, a, this is a, a graph or chart ready for the publication and i think it is looking good quite good next is statistical test in excel using third party addins so we can use third party addins for certain statistical test um, uh, like uh, yesterday you saw in origin software it has already embedded many statistical test and hypothesis testing uh, uh, these things uh, statistical uh, tools but in excel we don't have much advanced statistical tools so we have to use third party addins so what are these third party addins so these are analysis tool packs so you can get analysis tool pack just select for this and i don't know whether it is paid or purchased you can search for it so uh, you can uh, download this analysis tool pack and install in excel so this is a bit advanced feature you can just google it for the more information and they'll show you the demo tutorial how to do this how to download and how to install it in excel once it is installed in excel you can do many kind of analysis you can do anova correlation descriptive statistics app test uh, fourier analysis and so on so next is excel start so excel start is a purchased software but uh, this is very beautiful and very easy to handle you can do this uh, just in few clicks because it is more user friendly and that's why it is purchased version you can see they have built a good heat map over here uh, in the excel just in the excel so this is one of the leading data analysis and statistical uh, software uh, for the microsoft excel but you see uh, it is having uh, the basic version which is uh, $295 and as you go forward uh, it becomes more and more expensive and you have to renew the license every year so this is the case with excel stat and if you see the uh, users over here you can see the like university of cambridge harvard and yale many good reputable institutes and universities are using this software for the analysis and for publication next is genlx so genlx is basically the software used for uh, dna uh, microsatellite data analysis so we used to use it and it's free version so if you are having such kind of data you can get it downloaded freely genlx and you can uh, just follow the tutorial for analysis and that can be analyzed properly so even genetic data can be analyzed in excel then how to publish the research data so the research data can be published in various online repositories data can be we'll see which are online repositories that uh, can be used for publishing data then data can be submitted in any file format from any field of research in this repositories researchers can preserve and share the research outputs including figures data sets images and videos so this is the one of the data repository called as dried so dried is been recommended by most of the good research journals or high impact factor journals even i have deposited uh, uh, data sets over here uh, but this is paid paid repository why because they do peer review of uh, your data so here you can see like they the review the data uh, and they curate it properly when you submit it and when your manuscript gets accepted then they do curation review 
and they take, they take uh, fees which are relevant and accordingly they will publish your data then you will get a doi number which you can cite it and promote it uh, promote this kind of data set so yes you will receive citations also for your published research data so this is how it works uh, will not go into detail next is fix share fix share is free of course it doesn't uh, charges any fees uh, but it does uh, if we use some advanced features but till now i have not uh, paid for the fixed share so mostly um, we, when we have uh, low funds uh, we probably go for fixed share and even yeah it is good for uh, publishing data sets and approved by journals also like nature also approves for fixed share and um, okay so here you can store share discover uh, the research data so you can upload up to 5 gb files so after that i think it might charge you so this are uh, the publishers which publish data from the uh, fix share so you can see like loss willier royal society and many more springer they they use uh, this database as a repository for their publications Uh, here are the fields uh, from which the data has been deposited deposited so you can find your field also over here um, which where you can deposit your data uh, and then uh, you can see here some of the databases they have mentioned you can just scroll down and open it this is open access so yes we'll conclude with the workflow so what we uh, actually how or we do the data analysis in excel first of all we have to acquire data or database creation next comes cleaning and organizing the data to organize it properly in rows and columns to uh, make it uh, to trim it properly if it is having some white spaces then data exploration using pivot table or pivot chart as we did before and data visualization using chart so uh, excel doesn't has much advanced features but yes you can use those features whatever they are available as we use for creating good charts even you can use 3d charts also in excel it is having some options over there but that are not much good as compared to other purchase softwares the 3d option then you can publish the data set so this is the whole process where it comes uh, and you can uh, you can process your data in the same way so this is all about the excel for the analysis so thank you for your attention if you having any concern queries you can write me the email thank you uh, i'm over to uh, rajesh yeah thank you very much sir now i request dr pramod bagre the professor from mumbai to have a question answer session thank you very much rajesh sir can you hear me yeah yeah you yeah. we hear you sir yeah after this excellent session now there are few questions from audience that i would like to communicate to you sir uh, yes yes first question is uh, uh, what version of uh, excel you are using for this presentation okay uh, i don't know i am not able to means is it recent one like means uh, no yeah. not regarding this i am not able to see screens properly i think this is new version of zoom okay anyways uh, i am using uh, excel office 16 microsoft office 16 acha okay yes yes and you can use many more uh, free versions actually there are uh, google sheets available uh, there are different alternatives like google sheets then uh, it is uh, microsoft excel online um then apache of open office open office library office and wps office so uh, wps office is compatible uh, with windows you can install it and it is free open access okay sir yes next question is uh, can we perform operations on data from multiple tables uh yeah we can perform we can give the reference of that table even they are in different sheets we can give the reference of that sheet and accordingly we can do the analysis no issue okay so thank you next question is uh, can pivot table be used for small data and graphs can be made 
yes even for small data pivot table is uh, good and it can be used yes sir uh, next question is which one we can use in error bar standard deriv uh, deviation or standard error it is up to you like uh, what you want to represent uh, even both are okay standard deviation as well as standard error okay sir any one of it yeah next is uh, can we use or can we perform dmrt test from excel i'm not uh, aware of this dmrt test actually uh, okay sir next question is how we can refer to data from other table in any formula so uh, as we we saw no like uh, data from two different tables can be uh, mentioned by referring its uh, either column or cell numbers or if they are in different sheet we can mention sheet number also so data must be one excel sheet one excel uh, file no matter it is in different sheets even it is in different sheet we can uh, use the reference of that sheet in for sheet in formula you have to just go and google it so you will just find many of the forums answering such kind of questions and i i'm sure like you will not get stuck in between yes sir yes next is uh, can we submit published or unpublished data with fixture fixture yes we can submit uh, unpublished data but again when it is unpublished it is irrelevant uh, to any kind of uh, um, uh, explanation but but if we publish the data it refers to our manuscript and when it refers to our manuscript the uh, users will get to know more like why data was created how was it created and how was it analyzed so sometimes it happens like same data can be used by some other person in its an his analysis and he can refer or cite your data that was used so it's better to publish a manuscript with after or with the data set rather than to publish only data set yes sir next question is uh, this is one problem like uh, i have done one way anova using excel and uh, is it necessary <clears throat> means is it authentic because uh, is it necessary to use spss only for anova and excel uh, can't be used here they want to the, know the comparison yeah. yeah i don't think there should be any issue because at the end it is a statistical test you use any kind of software but yes it has some issues like sometimes excel gives errors in your analysis so here comes the case of th third party addons third party addons uh, are very good they are developed specifically for statistical test i would suggest to refer or use such kind of addons even the uh, good uh, institutes or universities do the analysis in excel by using such kind of uh, addons yeah yes sir uh, now the last question is is excel useful for arts and humanity of course excel is useful for all for all anyone can use excel even school going students they can organize uh, their uh, workflow even their time table and everything in excel and uh, yeah it is very good yes sir uh, last question is uh, is it safe to keep our uh, upload our data on fixture yes this is this is very important very good question so uh, basically they will not publish the data until and unless you tell them to publish so i would suggest to uh, ask them for publication after your manuscript is published not till then so uh, in case of dried dried does the same thing even if you say that database to publish or that it will not publish when it gets gets authentic confirmation from the journal itself that your manuscript has been approved for publication then only dried will process for a peer review and it will publish your data so basically uh, you should not publish or not ask database to publish your data unless and until you publish your manuscript or get accepted your manuscript yes sir one more question has come how and when to use pivot charts pivot charts come uh, basically uh, they are more informative when you having huge amount of data what you can do you can just drag columns 
to the uh, x axis and drag rows to the y axis or vice versa so it is more feasible to use pivot charts when you start using it you will get to know its importance so using just uh, a plain database is a uh, little bit more difficult to handle and analyze uh, than use a pivot chart in pivot chart you can do in each ways in both ways okay sir with this uh, we have come to the end of question answer session uh, i would like to thank all the participants for their active participation and patient listening uh, also i would like to mention here uh, sir's session on excel was excellent but many operations are there so most of the participant may feel that uh, it is difficult to grab it in one shot so yes. we will provide recordings there you can uh, always uh, have access to it and slowly you can work it on uh, yes. before i uh, hand it over to rajesh sir one question from my side sir uh, mm -hmm. is it necessary for a biological or a science researcher to get uh, familiarized with excel or we have to do some courses to learn that is it required or how far it is required it depends upon uh, what your necessity is if you want to go for analysis data analysis and that kind of part then it is okay it is good to use excel and uh, if you are able to use different coding languages or programs then it is always better more better than using excel so yeah if you are not familiar with codings and programmings and you are a basic researcher then it's better to use excel for your um, analysis as you, as you can generate good quality of figures even though from excel yes sir thank you very much uh, with this i would like to thank uh, all the participant and the uh, and the session in charge now i hand over to rajesh sir over yeah, to you rajesh yeah. sir thank you very yeah. much thank you thank you very much sir now uh, we have represented to participants to have a talk i request anuja jhate assistant professor department of microbiology manipal desai college pune maharashtra state india to deliver uh, representative participant talk okay can you hear me sir yeah yeah we can hear you sir ma'am okay very good evening to all of you first of all i would like to thank for organizing such a good webinar on data presentation in research article and its publication this webinar we from this webinar we learned a lot of things like what is the need and importance of ms word in research article how to use it about different operating systems how data is presented in research article and role of ms powerpoint presentation in research articles and about origin software for statistical analysis and microsoft excel in research article writing i think all the presentations were really good and informative and the speakers have explained it very relevant examples question answer sessions were too good because speakers have beautifully explained it and many queries got cleared another thing i think all the sessions were really helpful for all of us in conceptual understanding of research article writing and various aspects regarding it we found this webinar really helpful for advancing our research career thank you for organizing such a very good webinar and very special special thanks to great speakers for offering the knowledge from their research so that all the researchers would be benefited and thank you so much for giving me opportunity to say a few words thank you so much yeah thank you very much ma'am now i request okay. dr vandan botaskar head department of microbiology shiv chatrapati college aurangabad maharashtra state of india to deliver a participant talk hello good evening i am dr vandan gothaskar as one of the member from ijms uh, all the session can you hear me yeah yeah we can hear you ma'am okay okay all the sessions were informative and explained very well by each speaker even answered by each speaker i hope that all the participants surely enjoyed it and also get practically benefited in anil jogdan session session was that a uh, static stick there was some technical jargon which would be uh, which uh, which uh, should be uh, which should have been cut short, cut short for the benefit of audience uh, in dr rahul jamdade session 
if he would simplified it so that everybody could understand it very well hmm? there were some technical errors like voice breaking and some connectivity problem i hope this will be rectified in the next webinar with this i conclude my view about the webinar thank you yeah thank you very very much ma'am now i request savita majgaukar the co the co convener of this two days international webinar and iqac coordinator of tushila shankara garden mahavidyalay andala this satara maharashtra state of india to deliver vote of thanks thank you sir am i audible sir yes 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 ma'am please Please go ahead, ma'am. Vice, Vice Chancellor Shivaji University, Kolhapur, Honorable Dr. Anil Patil, Chairman Rajya Shikshan Sanstha, Honorable Mr. Pratap Rajji Bosle, Chairman, Honorable Mr. Shankar Rajji Gadve, Vice Chairman Khandala Vibhag Shikshan Samiti, Honorable Mr. Anuruddha Gadve, Secretary Khandala Vibhag Shikshan Samiti, Honorable Dr. K. G. Kanade. principal vice yeah. webinar dr s r bamne and dear participants it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion i miss savita majgaukar on behalf of sushila shankar rao gadwe mahavidyalay khandala international journal of microbial science and ashwant rao chavhan institute of science satara extend a very hearty vote of thanks to honorable delegates who blessed us with their presence and took out valuable time of their busy schedule also i would like to extend a special thanks to honorable dr n n chavan sir for sharing his valuable knowledge of research and polymers thank you sir for your very interesting and thought provoking address really sir if we want to develop our economy we must improve technology and keep going on research in various fields of knowledge thank you very much sir i would like to thank dr aparna gunjal for giving an excellent coverage to structure of research article and how to use ms word to write an article she has focused very minute things with examples that are important for writing a precise article a big thank you to mr anil jogdan for his efforts towards using origin software for statistical analysis with very nice and effective demonstrations it's an amazing experience sir i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for dr sanket joshi for its explanation of role of ms powerpoint presentation in writing research article so the examples that you have given to explain proper and effective presentation of data are very much effective and easy to understand thank you very much sir data analysis is an integral part of an quite difficult task in research we are very much grateful to dr rahul jamdade for explaining the robust features of microsoft excel that are used for data analysis and its process in very simpler way i'm sure our participants get benefited by this two days webinar we are grateful to paramar scheme ugc new delhi shivaji university kolhapur dr kg kanade principal ycis satara and dr jay kumar chavan iqac coordinator ycis satara for the enormous cooperation and support in the organization of this event i express my gratitude to our honorable principal dr s r bamne sir for providing encouragement and support as no program can become successful with a single person we have been fortunate enough to be backed by very motivated and dedicated team of international journal of microbial science who know their job and result oriented thank you very much team igms a special thanks to dr rajesh dhakne dr abhijit surav sir Dr. Javed Pare, Dr. Pradeep Ghogre, and Dr. Ashish Kumar, who have taken great. I would like to thank Mahavidyalaya for their wonderful support. And last but not least, a big thanks.
to all the participants for being a part of this webinar and for interacting with resource persons. Thank you very much. With this, I declare the end of the program. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. Before ending the program, we have some instructions to the participants. Number one, the certificate, the participation certificate will be received by only registered candidates. Now, we will, uh, we will send the feedback link to all participants through their email within two days. And after having a feedback submission, we will send the certificate to the registered candidate. Those candidates who are watching our live streaming on YouTube are requested to submit the feedback form that we have already placed in chat box. After submitting feedback form, they, they will be required to complete the registration process. And after confirmation of registration only, they will get authenticated certificate. And for all people across the globe, we are making to make we are we are going to make these uh, video sessions available on our YouTube channel. The link of YouTube channel will be provided to all participants of this webinar. Also, all people, researchers, professors, teachers, and all necessary person, all persons who require to have good contribution in research field, uh, they will get the YouTube channel link and then they can subscribe our channel and they can watch the YouTube's, uh, YouTube's videos of uh, all speakers of this webinar for forever, permanently. So in this way, we are going to serve the uh, nation and world directly or indirectly by promoting the scientific literary domain of the globe. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, declare that the program is over, but we are going to arrange such type of programs in future also. Whenever we'll arrange such type of future, uh, programs in future, we will definitely let you know so that all of you and others will get benefit of such type of excellent programs. With this, I would like to stop here and thank you all once again for showing your greatest, greatest participation in this program. And with this, we would like to end the program. Thank you and bye-bye and good night all.